Happy New Year! Um, super excited to be with you in this new year, 2024. And we are having technical difficulties on Facebook, so catch us on YouTube, and that's where you can find all of our videos every week. So Carrie's currently posting um, something to the Facebook crowd so that they know to migrate over to YouTube. So today we have a very, very, very special lesson. We're going to be talking about color as attitude. And I think that you're going to find it um, pretty neat. Because if you think about, you know, if you don't like your attitude, change it. So it works with color as well. So if you don't like a color, or if you don't like something that you're doing in your house, then you can fix it um, DIY style and you can change it by changing its color. So I'm going to talk about color. I'm going to give you some tools. We're also going to paint on canvas and we are, I'm going to show you how you make attitude adjustments using color. So I'm super excited. Yes. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Nice to be seen, actually, nice to right? Nice to be seen, yeah. Yeah. So um, you guys let us know if you've got snow happening in your area because we do not currently, but they're threatening us. Yeah. Next, I saw something I saw something last night that said we're we could get anywhere from four to nine inches in the next week or so. So Yeah, I know, right? So if my sister-in-law, Linda, has made it over to YouTube, hi, Linda. Uh, we were talking yesterday. She says she never misses a Tuesday and checks it out every week. So um, it's so neat to have supportive family. Should we talk about everything? That little guy sitting over there? This one? Yeah. yeah. So if you are not currently subscribed to our YouTube channel, we highly recommend it. We now that we're back in a normal schedule, we will yeah. be live on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. And then on Saturdays, we release a project video or a technique video, mm -hmm. something that you will learn from. And this past week, can't believe we haven't done this on Studio R12 before this past week, was collage papers. Yes. So what I love about the collage papers is, so this music is the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Um, we have six stencils that are shaped in this long shape and that will work with the basically the collage paper. And then we have the tall collage paper music to go with it. Some of them are the name of the song, like we have Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what the others. And some of them are just lyrics from the song that the collage paper is for. And so we used the It Is Well With My Soul collage paper and then did the um, stencil on top of it and then used our layered barn. Are we okay? Facebook. Okay. Yay. Hi, Facebook. Um, so technical difficulties. Um, everybody that is on Facebook, if you ever have a problem seeing us on Tuesdays, um, just hop on over to YouTube and see our channel there. And you can um, usually, Facebook's the one that gets a little bit cranky. Anyway, so we are doing, we have collage papers being featured this Saturday. And I think it's, what time is it released? First thing in the morning? It was last Saturday. Oh, this was We've last already Saturday. Sorry. That. Um, Christmas, New Year. I don't know. I, I, I don't have memories of these things. Um, so anyway, but um, I show some neat things about how to distress your paper after you've glued it on. I show about antiquing. Like there's so many lessons in this one project. So remember that our Saturday projects are not necessarily just projects. A lot of times they're technique project so you can take and apply it to everything Agreed. and this weekend we have a fun release fun. a project that is 30 year, 25 years in the 20, making i think it's 28 yeah um, very close patty <laughs> finished a project that she started 28 years ago and gave it to her husband as a christmas gift and so in the video we're showing how to take an old project yeah that she she hand painted it's a clock project and She's I'm gonna, finishing it. And, I'm doing the, the clock details. Yeah. So basically, if you ever wanted to know how to paint a clock, because if you think about clock, clocks are really interesting to me because we have a lot of digital going on, but there's a clock in like every room of my house, I think. It's really close um, because you, if I'm sewing and I'm in my sewing room, I need to know what time it is and I might not necessarily have my phone out because I'm yeah. you know doing the little... Um, stitching and ironing and things like that. So um, clocks are super cool and you can totally make um, a clock for any size. We have all the stencils for it. And the reason I did not finish this project was because it was intentionally made as a clock. But if you've ever mathed 
the, the, the layout of a clock to get it exactly accurate is really hard. And, um, and I just, it was more than my math brain. I'm artist side, I can't math side. And so it was really hard for me. And so I just put it down and I got frustrated. And then I didn't pick it back up once we started making stencils for clocks. I never picked it back up. So yeah. if any of you struggle with math, give me a, I, I struggle two hands up in the chat because I need some sympathy. <laughs> 28 years, that was so long. Yeah, oh. So we're really looking forward to that release. It's a cool it's project. A, it's a cool project. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I think it also kind of gives some ideas on what you can give for guys. Yeah. And Agreed. Um, un unfortunately, fortunately, it's time to start thinking about it because Father's Day Father's projects. Father's coming. And, yeah. um, so we have a lot of looking ahead coming yes. up. And speaking of, we are in a new year. Dun, 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 dun. And we released our pre-order for the January 2024 Yay. project of the month today. So you guys, you can, these have been so popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been really great, and really good. Every month is completely different. For last month, we did a 3D sled. Yeah. And so this month, it's something completely different. Um, I'll say there's a lot of layering going on. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. And make sure you go and look on Facebook. I think that's the best place to go, right? To the, um, com not, it's not community anymore, but the photos. Um, I don't know. What are you going to talk about? And I'll tell I you where to go. To, a lot of our people have been sharing their pictures mm -hmm. of what they've done. So yes. So um, they see those? on Wednesdays, we post a what are you painting Wednesday. Um, some of them are in a collection on our photos. They're in an album. Um, not all of them are so okay. yeah sure but on our what are you painting Wednesday and then I also have a blog post where if you have not purchased a project of the month in 2023 I put all of our photos of what we released this past year together so you can kind of get an idea of what kind of products you're definitely getting this. a completely great deal um, it is it is an amazing amazing deal so um, make sure that you check it out and um, with the project of the month, you also get you get a private. Um, it's just for people that subscribe. Um, email that sends you to a video that I do, um, so that you can see what to do with the things that come in your mm -hmm. package. Yeah. And there's a lot of pieces usually, so that you can pull things together. We really want it to be a creative experience, and so yeah. we, we invent it. To be that way. So today's January 2nd, 2024. The pre-order for the January 2024 project of the month runs through January 9th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern. And then that project will ship on January 15th. If you order anything else when you when you do your pre-order, that those items will be sent immediately. But the project of the month will not be sent until January 15th. Yep. All right. So shall we? We shall. Um, get started. I want to talk about color. Um, so how many of you... Um, struggle with color. I think that that's one of the things I think that's, I wanted this lesson for January because that's where you start a project, right? Like you, you have to buy your stencil, but color is like when you get inspired to paint something like, um, you wouldn't paint, um, I'm going to try, you wouldn't necessarily paint like something like a lemon in pink, you know, like, so if you're wild about lemons, you probably have some yellow accents in your house. Um, there is a website and I'm going to put this right here and you guys can see this, right? Okay. So it's color.adobe.com and I didn't bring my tablet today, so I can't show this to you, but, um, and I didn't want to make it be about the app, but go to this website. And when you go there, you can upload pictures of like your house of a room of uh, something that you love. Like I pulled these two images out of a catalog. So this is a very warm um, look. And so this is like that attitude thing. If you, if you had a bohemian attitude, you might be over here. And if you wanted to fix your bohemian attitude and make it into a I'm warm and cozy attitude, then you might come over here and choose different colors. So that is how you fix your paints attitude. That is how you select the attitude that you want. And then I'm going to show you what to do with contrast as well. But in that, in the color.adobe.com, you can upload this image and then you can pick the colors that are here and it will tell you how to, what the colors look like in a palette. And then you can go, this is our paint chip 
um, set. This is how many, we have like 80 paints that we use. And this is a conversion chart. This is something you can buy on our website and that's studior12.com. And um, this is, it shows you all the different colors we use and it gives you the deco art number. So if you're a craft paint user, then you can do that. We paint big and a lot. So we use Sherwin-Williams um, in the little to-go um, sample containers. Um, that's just way better. And then we decant them from this into these honey bottles. And we've got a link for our Amazon um, product for this guy. These are actually really tough to find on Amazon because they're not labeled very well. But um, anyway, so that link will help you. And they have mini ones and then they have this eight ounce, I think six ounce, eight ounce size. But anyway, this also gives you the hex code as well. So as we're painting, I'm gonna tell you the numbers of the things that I'm painting with and that will tell you on this chart what we're doing. So if you ever want to exactly replicate what I'm doing, then you can get your chart and you will know. Um, we have shown off the Adobe app in a previous video. We have. I have shared that. So if you want to see kind of how it works, it's and get more really of a cool. Deep dive. Like it's really, really cool. Okay, so I'm going to show a couple more examples and then I'm going to show you how we're going to paint on canvas today, which is super cool. And there's some things you need to know about painting on canvas. So this is an example of two things that you could easily paint the same way. Um, like I could put your stronger than you know on this kind of faded color, um, this kind of board, or I could put less to she who believed on this kind of board. So, but these are two different personalities, right? So they definitely attitude wise, like you can interpret this however you want, but these have two different attitudes. So it's really important that you know that you can establish the mood and that's what we're going to do in just a minute. And one more. Um, so this is our tile stencils. If you ever need to paint tiles for your floor, on a tray, on a wall, any of that kind of stuff, studior12.com is where you go because we have so many. Um, it was an epic project to get it done and we actually made them European sized and American sized. So you can actually repaint your bathroom tiles using our stencils because they're sized exactly. So if you wanted to do to a floor, if you wanted to do a bathroom, you wanted to do a backsplash, we have tile, um, tile stencils and they come in quarters. So you repeat this going around and that is how you do it. But look at the two different personalities here. This is bohemian, subdued, masculine. This is more nautical, that kind of thing. So your color is definitely always going to establish your mood. And then please let us know if you find this interesting because I think I think it's very interesting. Okay, so we have really affordable, we're not gonna use a cheap word, um, affordable little canvases. Um, you can get them at all the craft stores. You can get them um, pre-arted from the Dollar Tree as well. So um, you can choose like how you get it and you could paint on just plain boards. But I'm doing canvas today because there's some things to know and I thought um, this would make a good lesson. Number one thing to know is canvas is cloth. Okay, so I can feel the nap of that cloth. It's um, generally a cotton. This is probably synthetic because it's affordable. And um, But when you have that cloth back, and so it's primed on this side, it is unprimed on this side. Okay, so if you have a loose canvas, something that is loosened up, then what you can do is you can take, and I'm not going to do this because I am going to paint on the other side. You can take this misting bottle and you can the back side, let it alone and leave it dry and it will shrink back up. So that is how you're going to tighten your canvases. If you have something that you've already painted on, miss the back of that and it will tighten back up. It's really a cool trick. I love it. Okay, so now we're going to paint the, our base coat on this because there's things to know about that. And I wanted to introduce some star players. These are little foam applicators to apply your paint. And we've been using them for a couple of months now. And I've got to say that the firmness, I'm like really pushing on this and look at how much is not bending. The firmness of these is amazing. If you have these, if you wouldn't mind saying something in the chat and let people know that you like them, what you like about them. If you don't like them, say that too. Um, they come in sets. Everything is $2.99 for the set. And these are a little one inch. 
These are the two inch and then this is the three inch and they are pretty amazing and they do a great job of antiquing as well. So these are magic. Um, does it matter what temperature the water is when you spritz mm -mm. the canvas? Nope, you can do whatever temperature you want. All right, so I'm gonna base the top of this with pink because we're gonna do some fun magic-y things with pink. Pink is a sassy color, right? So when I'm doing this, I'm gonna use thin coats. I'm using paint color 53. And I'm just gonna do a very thin coat using this number three. I'm not doing the sides just because I don't need to. And this isn't, this isn't about the art today. This is about the attitude. It's really important that it's thin because canvas actually takes quite a bit of time to dry. So I'm gonna do one coat and I'm gonna let it dry while I'm doing some stuff with these pre-prepped um, boards. And we have gotten a couple comments Go on the foam brushes. Mm -hmm. um, I have some of the brushes and love them. That was from Vicki and then Rich said they work way better than the big store ones. Yeah. You guys, um, there's, it's it really, I don't think it has to do with brand. I think um, these are like cheap and I, there's no other word for $2.99 for a mm -hmm. set of four brushes and yeah. three brushes and two brushes and whatever. Um, but they happened on the right material doing the right thing. And I, I don't know that it's, I don't even know that they intentionally figured out success, you know, yeah. so. Um, Pat said, I seem to frequently get bubbles when I use foam brushes. Is hmm. this normal? Um, I don't know. I have not had that happen. Um, I wonder if there's water in her brush or Pat's brush. Mm -hmm. um, so check that out and see. Now, something that is really interesting when you are doing um, canvas projects, if you watch, if I push on this, I, there's some give. Okay, that's always going to be with canvas. You need something up behind it. So you can use a board that fits exactly, which is difficult to find, or you can fold a towel so that it fills your void in the back and makes a nice firm um, surface to paint on. So that's kind of a fun tip, little pro tip. So today we are gonna attitude with a little bit of like New Year's glow. And I'm gonna show you some techniques. I'm going to paint and then I'm going to paint over things. Why did I get a new brush dirty? <laughs> if you need to put your brushes aside and come back to them for the second coat, you can put them in a baggie like this and then put them off to the side. Do not neglect your brushes though, because if you let that dry in there, then you're gonna to have to throw it away. And while they're affordable enough to do that, you don't wanna waste, so we never wanna waste. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down my stencil because um, I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna come back to it. So we're gonna take our painter's tape. This is stretchy tape, it actually bends. It's pretty cool stuff. It's on our website. Okay, so I'm gonna tape in two spots. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Oh, I need that guy still. All right, so Pat says she uses soap to clean them. Ah. So that's where the bubbles are coming yeah, from. She said, I, I thought I rinsed well. Regardless of how much you rinse, it is, um, it is almost impossible, impossible. Yeah. to get all of the soap out of yeah, the so foam. Yeah, so definitely no soap. Um, just clean water, squish, 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 squish until it runs clean. Um, and honestly, then make sure that you are, um, when you are running your paint and cleaning your brushes, cleaning your stuff, your basin, make sure that you run water through your pipes in your house as well so that the paint, paint is plastic. Um, you can flush the paint if you wanna dump your basin in the toilet and then flush that because that is a much bigger hole. Um, and then you can, then you won't get that same problem. Um, quickly while we're on mm -hmm. this, um, we've had multiple questions. Multiple people are asking if we wet our foam brushes before we use them. I do not. I, I don't think I ever have. Um, if I was doing a wash, I would do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. No, and I, we're just, we use the foam brushes to base. To base coat. Yeah. And that is, that's where we defining And defining a base um, is, base coat is solid and wash is um transparent. So um, 
were base coating with ours. And then if I was doing other specialty techniques, I might get into some other brushes, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna show a couple of things on Black Knight. I'm gonna show Attitude and Sass, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna come back to this. I'm actually probably gonna have to flip and flop a little bit, but we'll see how I work my way through it. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, so this is a subtle attitude. Have you ever had the really, you've met a really nice person, but they're the kind of person that's not outgoing and maybe they're just like, I just wanna be back here and hang for a little bit. So this is a subtle effect. So we're gonna go on our black with gloss varnish. Did you know that you could paint with gloss varnish? This is super cool. All right, so we're gonna go into our gloss varnish and we're going to offload just like normal. And I'm going to stipple Reload. Normally I like to swirl, but with this technique, you definitely, and honestly, I think um, because I need it solid enough to show but I don't want it to run under. So I'm kind of going with a, a made up technique. Anybody else growing their hair out for 2024? <laughs> it's a mess, I'm like getting in my face and I don't know what to do with all this hair. Carrie, what do you do with all that hair? <laughs> Put it back. I'm almost there. Okay, let's see. I think I got everywhere. All right, so I'm going to peek and flip. And so you can see, I missed this whole bar right here. I'll have to go back in and get that. So you can do this. This is a really cool technique um, for a wall where you don't want anything screaming at you. You want a little bit of texture, a little bit of pattern. Um, scrolls look really well. Um, like patterns look really well and you do it all with gloss varnish and then you don't have anything too much yelling at you. It's just a really subtle effect. Let me drop that back over and get that arm. Okay, so now everybody's done, ta-da, finished. And now let's change its attitude. Okay, so now we're gonna get into white. So white is gonna be that really just like, hi, I'm graphic, here I am, let's talk about me. You know, it's something that you want to be seen when you have the most contrast. So contrast is you don't get any more contrast than black and white. They're the furthest apart. And when we send you your dome brushes, which you need dome brushes, comment in that comment box and say how much you love your dome brushes because the flat ones are just a recipe for disaster but we send you a grayscale to show you how your colors line up on the grayscale. You'll just match that there. The perfect contrast for being able to see things is two steps. So if I was white, I would move into two steps away and I would be in, in box number three. So you lay your paint near that and see where you are. This is a number three. And that gives you just a visual to know when you have pretty. So this is in your brush set when you get your brush sets. Okay, so black and white, the most contrast. Now I'm gonna swirl with this one. And now that's another technique, right? And we, we actually have talked about this like a ton. If I swirl once, there's so many, I'm just like my mind is going pew, 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 because there's so many lessons in what I'm talking about today. Um, I hope that you're getting this and make sure that you're sharing with any of your crafting or artist friends um, so that they can learn from these lessons as well. You notice that every time I load paint, I'm offloading. And I actually, um, see if I get everything. All my bits and baubles. Much easier to see if I'm getting it with a color. I am, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look and see. So by doing one coat, I have a soft look and I don't have anything too strong. So do you see how the attitude changed? 
with the gloss. I just got that tone on tone, very discreet, very soft, very whatever right there. And now we're going to go and we're going to go with a second coat and you'll see the attitude change even more. So let us know if you think that this is interesting because I feel, I hope I'm not the one that thinks it's interesting and everybody else is like, no, it's definitely interesting. Um, Kelly says, I absolutely love the dome brushes. Vicki says, I absolutely love the dome brushes. They're um, so great, you guys. Carol yeah. says, I love the dome brushes also. Kathy says, love the dome brushes. I have three sets. Yeah, um, we've done some math on, like, we have so many dome brushes. Um, the um, Having three sets is about the right number. So if you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas, um, maybe you go shopping on our website and go get you some things you wanted for Christmas. But um, three sets is about right because you can't use them wet. So in order to have enough to use to paint every day, um, okay, so here we're going to reveal, and now look at now we've gotten way more contrasty, right? So the attitude is there now. However, we can go one more time. Now you could also um, go ahead and you could um, use just you could use glitter on this to then take that attitude up even one more notch. We all know those friends that are the glitter friends, mm -hmm. so um, everybody's got them. We all know who they are. And I'm gonna do half of this and show you the difference between them. <clears throat> if you were doing glitter, let's just do half. You would, um, you could glitter right on your paint. You could glitter it with some varnish. You could glitter with glue. So if you wanted to do glitter, you could do either of those. I'm actually gonna show that on one of these below. So um, look at the difference between that side and that side. Isn't that amazing? This is a definite different temperament than this side. So it's just really important to know that you can affect change by just using contrast. Now I'll finish this and then we're going to go in a slightly different direction. If you have a spot, this has got just a one little open spot right here. If you get a stencil that has a little open spot, just hold it down. It's not open wrong, it's just open because of design. Well, and the canvas, canvas is, weird. is yeah. also not as firm. flat yeah. and firm as when you're using a piece of wood. Okay, so I finished that all the way through. And so now let's go in a slightly different direction. Um, we can, and where did I put it? Here it is. It was too big to see. Okay, so I'm going to shake this up. This is a metallic. Okay, so now we're going to change the attitude a little bit more. And I might have to have... Nope. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about anybody with headphones. Ah. <laughs> Nick, are you okay? Yep. Ah. <laughs> Good. I think it would be safe to say that if I'm talking and shenaniganing that you should never turn your headphones up too loud. I don't know that I'm a glitter personality, but I'm definitely a noisy personality. Whoop. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to work out the paint, and I'm going to pick up some silver paint. So this is metallic, and I'm actually going to switch brushes, and let me tell you why. So metallic is never pigmented very strong. It's always sheer. It's always that kind of thing. So by having white in my brush, if I pick up the silver, it's going to muddy the silver. So I want to just get that into the water and then I'll pick up a different brush. Yes, I can. And then we're going to do the same steps where we get rid of some of the paint. We always offload. And now we're going to go over here. Um, this probably would be better if I undercoated with gray. I was hoping to be able to just skip to the white with the, this over the top. But we'll see. I'm just going to do half and we'll take a look at it. So if I wanted it to be very silver, very gray, I would go ahead and do my base with the gray. And then I would do the silver on top of the gray. 
Okay, so let's take a look. And as I suspected, you can't tell. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, so, but not a problem. I think you get the idea. So th this is extremely transparent. And so what you would do, do gray, and then you would do the silver on top of it. I'm going to do one more thing with this, and then I actually need to make that be the last thing I do. So I'm not going to do it on this board. Um, I want, I'll save it. You're not going to know until I get it done. Okay, so I'm going to take this off of here, and we're going to go over to our pink that has two coats. But then in the meantime, this one is dry and I need to do a second coat. So I, I saved this so that you could see, this is what happens with these brushes. When you do your first coat, it's gonna be, has some little streaks. It's not like a like feeling streak, it's just a streak like a paintbrush streak. Um, and so that doesn't coat in one coat on top of this and these guys. So then you go in with your little saved baggie of brushes and pick up some paint and then you do your second coat. And you do not need the towel under for just basing unless you have a big canvas. If you have a big canvas, you will need some support. Okay, we've had a couple questions about why you used gloss first. That was just to show just, a style. So that wasn't yeah. necessarily you using don't, gloss yeah. as the stencil. The, the gloss was just used to show that the gloss you can color. use the yeah. gloss through the stencil rather than using a paint. And then we just painted over it to show the difference yes. of the gloss versus what it would look like as well. It's like I was showing a progression of attitudes. So the gloss was the most subtle paint color I could use. Um, if you want to call gloss a paint, um, I'm calling it a paint today because I used it through a stencil. Um, and it wasn't, you don't start with that. You just use it if you want a color. There's a really trendy look of gloss black on top of mm -hmm. matte black. Yes. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's my favorite. It's gorgeous. So, um, yes, yeah, so it, it's not necessary. I just, it, I couldn't go backwards and I couldn't start with white and then show you what the gloss looked like. I had to start with gloss because that was the first thing that would show. And then the light white and then the darker white and then the more white yeah. and then on top of that the metallic i had to go in a progression in order for it to be seen except for that can you metallic. give me the metallic that you use yeah. please thank you all right so now we're going to support our canvas and shut the front door on our brushes because we don't want them to dry out okay so we're going to talk about sassitude here um, if you were doing pink, and you guys can throw out your suggestions in the comments, um, I think it's just kind of fun to see what you guys think. Um, but if you were saying, I'm a sassy girl, sassy person, um, and you were going to paint a contrast color on here, what color would mean sass to you? I want to I hear it. Okay. It's a good question. I don't, I don't want to mislead the audience. The witnesses. So we've had a couple people who've been commenting about being a little impatient. They don't necessarily like the offload method because it takes too long. Yeah. And have been asking if there's a paint that they can use that would do more coverage mm -hmm. so they don't have to do layers. And guys, we just I don't we don't have one of those yeah. because that's not the method that we use. So, so there might be someone else who yeah. could comment on that but yeah with us we have found that um a lot of people will use mod podge as a first layer and then stencil over it if we're going to do a layer of something we feel like we are just going to do a layer of thin yeah. paint if you're okay so there's there's like eight questions in that one yeah. comment there um so number one question is the thinness of the paint or the thickness or the the coverage of the paint um the opacity of the paint. So paint companies um, tend to, there's a couple of pigments that are very expensive and they tend to be like what they avoid. So the yellows and your reds and anything associated with red, so your oranges, things like that. Anything that has like a lot of white, you can see that that's very close to the color white. This is gonna have opacity. If you had a yellow, 
Let's go into the magic drawer of paint. This has a lot of white in it, so this is going to cover way better than something that doesn't have any white. So this is way more yellow pigment. This is going to be very difficult to cover. In this case, I would undercoat either with a white or um, honestly, undercoating with something that's yellow mixed with white would be a really good answer. Um, so, and the numbers are so we can find things yeah. first. Well, and I, I think that really it for us when it comes to doing thin layers, offloading, mm -hmm. I think that it shows by our work and yeah. when we watch other painters who are not doing the offloading, um, you well, can you tell see, a difference. Instantly you see. So that's, that's where I was going mm -hmm. next, right? Is if you think it takes a long time to do the base coats through your stencils, think about how long it takes you to fix your mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, that takes, it takes so much longer to fix a mistake than it does to um, take your time. And, and the offloading is, I, the thing I don't like about the offloading the very most is the amount of waste. I don't like the wiping off all my paint onto my paper towel. Oh, hi. I just encountered silver. Um, so I don't, I don't appreciate that part, but I haven't found a solution for it. So I don't get to have that. So do we have any guesses about contrast colors? Colors. We have bright pink, Ooh. black, lime green, Bahama blue, teal, oh, purple, orange, lots of bright pink and hot pinks. Mm -hmm. I like it. So the one that I chose <clears throat> was black because I think black and pink. Yeah. Is so it's not Tiffany, but it feels Tiffany somehow yeah. to me, you know? It's just classic. Yeah. It's kind of like a Chanel. Yeah. Like just a I agree. And so when same thing on this as you do with the other, you offload. Um the on the time it takes to do, when you are doing your swirling, this doesn't take very much time. I think stippling takes, and stippling is like torture to me. I own a stencil company and stippling is like torture to me. That tells you how much I don't think it's that valuable. I have so. a picture that I'll have to share. I recently did a video and I think I had to do seven layers of stenciling because we did a drop shadow on it. <laughs> and I was, I think I had my hand on my yes. chin and I had like a really mean face because I had so many layers and I was trying to do color over color. And so like we get it. Stippling can be a pain in the butt. Yeah, sometimes you have to stipple. Um, like the gloss, you have to do that. Um, the other thing that is important to know, um, if you have not, if you if you've painted without stencils and you so pretend, uh, well, we'll just pretend on this one. Okay, pretend like this was traditional art and you wanted to do this exact chandelier, and you had a line art that you downloaded from the internet and you wanted to put that on there and then fill it in. You go ahead and you base coat that thing four times with brush and try to get exactly into the lines and do all of that detailing and stuff like that. You will find out that this is a short amount of time to use a stencil. It just takes all the time, all the work. You'd have to trace it. You'd have to base it. Then you'd base it. Then you'd base it. And mm, the amount of time. Whew. Okay, I'm going to flip this over. So now that's that maybe that shire person, that shire room, that room where you don't want anything screaming at you, you could take a pinker pink, you know, go bubble gummer. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm making up words here. Today is makeup word day. It's the 2nd of January. I can do what I want to. And so now we'll do our second coat. So the neat thing also about swirling is that when you get done with your design, usually it's all dry. And so now I can go right from the top. And yeah, that's the other thing. If you have a paint that covers more, it's the drying time is going to be a lot longer in between. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it is um, it, just the details. My gosh. Drying time, details, swirling. Um, and then what's neat about this, so if you are somebody that has based before, where, um, you know, like if you didn't just get born into the stencil world, um, I got born into the base and trace world, 
and um, you and you know even if you're an artist and you can draw, I'm not a drawer. Um, my first couple hundred designs that I painted um, on my other website, I um, I it would take me a week to draw a design, you know. But then you still trace it to get this kind of detail and have it be accurate and balanced. You'd still have to trace, even if you drew the original thing. Can you seal the canvas when you're finished? Can yes, yeah. you absolutely what, what can. What would you use? Um, I would just use varnish, um, okay. matte varnish. Um, if you want it shiny, do it shiny, but I tend to default to matte almost all the time. So now let's take a look at this. And now we've gotten sassier. So you see how we're sneaking up. You could stop at one coat. You could stop at two coats. Let's go all the way. Let's go for three. And then I'm going to show you sweet pink. So if you guys want to put guesses in the comments and tell us what color would look cute with for sweet pink. So we're going to do the same chandelier. And make it look sweet. What would we do? Can you blow dry canvas? Can and I did. And what will that do? It just just, just to dry the paint. Just dries okay. it faster. It it's not going to be a loosening type mm -mm. of thing. Okay. Now um, it actually could release some tension, and it will t come back mm -hmm. once it's it'll soften everything, okay. and then it'll tighten back up as it cools. Kind of like a cake when it comes out of the oven or bread when it comes out of the oven, you can push on it and it's going to be softer than an hour from now when it's had time to cool down. All right. So a testament to using good paint. Our friend Blake says he used a certain cheap craft paint. From, mm, I know which one. From a big box store. I know which that one. I will not name. <laughs> We're and not going to slam people. And he said after 10 layers, mm. I gave up on it. Yes. And it was white and it yeah. never fully covered. Yeah. A um, couple of things with fully covering. Also, um, I haven't used this pink bottle of paint for uh, probably a year. Um, I don't tend to paint in pinks. Um, if you shake it, so a lot of times your good stuff settles to the bottom, and so you need to redistribute that through your paint. So, I mean, I'm talking like shake it and don't hit your hand. I did that for years and then couldn't figure out why my hand was radiating <laughs> pain, and I looked at myself one day going, ah! Um, but yeah, so shake it, give it a good two or three minutes of shaking. Um, don't, don't think because it comes out looking okay that you're distributed. So that will help with coverage as well. Well, and also a lesson I learned, um, when we moved into this building, I made a whole new set of paints for us and we have 80 paint colors. So I filled up 80 honey bottles and I was not aware that you don't fill them up all the way. Oh yeah. So you need to leave a little bit of space so it's it has room, room to yeah. move. Um, unfortunately, I messed this up for a while because we couldn't <laughs> okay. shake any of the paints and there were 80 uh, of them. Yeah, having a little gurgle room <laughs> when you can hear it, that's the good noise. Okay. So here's our sass. Okay, so we go on there, and now you can see that we have um, a nice bold project that would look super cute on, you know, a wall with some in your closet, your jewelry room. That kind of not jewelry room. Who has a jewelry? I don't not have. A jewelry I do not room. have a powder room. <laughs> a yeah, powder, powder room. room. Oh, and a really good idea. Um, my friend Paula. Um, has um, a powder room for her daughter, and it's just really sweet. And she did her stencil backwards and said, you are gorgeous, and did it in reverse so that in the mirror, when she's getting ready every day for school, it shows you are gorgeous forward. That's, and it's yeah, just it's a super, super cool. cool, super cool thing. All right, so you want to hear Ooh, some hi. guesses? I want to hear guesses. Yellow, Ooh. baby blue, oh, that's a good light idea. aqua. Gray. Nice. Okay, I'm not going with any of those. However, I'm going to the blow dryer for a second. <laughs> All right. So I did leave a little glum right there, so we're just going to flip that over. Um, if you ever leave something like this is like a blob of paint that I didn't smooth out. If you ever have one of those, then what you do is you sand and then maybe give it one more base coat, dry it. 
If I would have gone to the blow dryer right away, I would have noticed it and I could have smoothed it out. All right, so we're gonna do three more things and we will be done. But I think they're super cool. Um, so something that is interesting, this has got black on it and I'm about to go with a contrasty color. So I'm gonna show you a quick clean if I can find alcohol. Oh wait, alcohol? That is not going to- Not the right stuff. alcohol. Okay, just kidding. Okay, so this one's new. So if I wanna clean off my stencil, then I can do a quick little clean. Eesh. If so, it's probably in the bottom with the okay. mediums. Yeah. Eesh. Struggle, struggle, struggle. <laughs> okay. You wanna give that back to me so it's out of yeah. the way. Thank you. Thank you. And so we'll pour this alcohol onto our paper towel and then we can go on here and just clean off our stencil. You wanna be careful about catching your edges. So you rub towards the edge that might catch. And so really you could stencil with rubbing <laughs> off your, um, your paint. There's so many techniques, you guys. Stencils, what I love about them is they're reusable, so you're not like boxed in to any one technique. You can use them over and over. You can, you can do all of these attitudes. with. I've used this one stencil like seven times already. So you can just keep going. I'm only taking this off because sometimes paints can bleed. The notoriously evil paint that bleeds all the time is red. Um, I don't know why, I don't know if it just doesn't have um, get up and go in it, but it is notorious for blending with light colors. So um, if you have red on your stencil and you're about to paint white, did I just give that away? I think I did. Um, if you're about to paint white, then you're gonna want to absolutely um, clean your stencil because it's just gonna be sad. Okay, so I'm cleaning that off. I'm gonna give it a dry. Okay, so I am choosing white and So if you guys are finding any of this interesting, please make sure that you like, subscribe, ring the bell, um, give us a thumbs up, any kind of interaction. All of the algorithms um, love interaction. So if you like it, give us a give us a thing. So Carol did guess white. Okay. So we'll give awesome. Carol. Carol, yes. You get a half point. Okay. Because that's not all what we're doing. <laughs> it is not all what we're doing. No. So I have, let's see, I have... Three more things that I'm going to do. And I'm actually, what, uh, it's probably two because I'm combining one. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so same thing as before. We're going to swirl. And I actually had to do white with this because of what I'm going to do after. So I think some of those other choices, I like the idea of like a Bahama blue. I think that's a really neat idea. The yellow is interesting to me. I'm not visualizing. And the other thing, if you can't visualize, go to that color.adobe.com and we're not affiliated in any way whatsoever, but go there and you can visualize your colors that way. It will help you fill in colors. It is a great tool. Well, I think some people were thinking of yellow for like a gold chandelier. Ooh, yeah. Uh, we had someone asking about painting... Um, like the candles to make them look like they were glowing. Yes. Um, you guys, there's so much fun. And that is something that we have not spent very much time on that I will be spending time on in the future is having accents and details added so that, like, for instance, you know, these beads could be treated a different way. You could make mm -hmm. this a Christmas chandelier yeah. you could make it a goth chandelier mm -hmm. you could make it with cobwebs and spiders and things like that so there's like a ton of things you could do and because 
you can reuse it. You don't have to. You can use it in your Halloween. You can use it in your baby room. You can use it in your your bathroom. You can use it everywhere and just keep reusing it. Over we actually had a request the other day. We had our Halloween tall porch where you made the pumpkins. Eyes look like they were glowing, and we had a request to do some different projects like that. So yeah. like this one, you could do the candles glowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the um, where I painted the wine advent, um, mm -hmm. that has, I yes. did the glowing lights on that, Christmas so you lights. could go to that video and you could go see that. So go to YouTube, check out our channel. And now let's take a look at this and see where we're at. Okay, so there we go. We have that shy personality once again. And so this is just... The way that you would start this and in order to just not make this a million hours long i'm going to go ahead and show you my next step as a different step um and so, so that to me looks like it's bleached it does look doesn't bleached it look doesn't bleached? it yeah like it, it really does that tone on tone but it's so soft and elegant you know so if i did it more coats it would be bolder and bolder and it would be a subtle bold you know so once again the personality and once again, hopefully my tape gave away. Um, Carol asked, do you need to iron that fabric like you do with pillows? No. So canvas. No, now. not at all. I need a new piece of tape because I've stuck and restuck and stuck and restuck a million times. All right, so next, here we go. Who's ready for a wild ride? We're gonna do it. And I'm going to do funny things to it. So this is, um, this is just no, modeling paste. You could use gesso. <laughs> I keep putting things in front of the cameras. <laughs> okay. I think. more for the patty sound. I know. Um, if nothing else, it's animating, right? Okay. So what you're going to do with this is you could do a couple of tricks. Um, Hotel key, palette knife. Any of these will work. I'm going to use the palette knife. I like the offset handle on the palette knife. We have these on our website because if you flat something, it's easy to drag your fingers and knuckles through them. So I do like these, but this could be a very cheap tool to use if you don't have one of these. Okay, so I'm going to turn this sideways and then I'm just going to frost. And by the way, stencils, our stencils are food safe, so you can actually use them on cupcakes and cakes and all of that as well. So I'm going here and I'm gonna give it texture. If I wanted to, I could, and um, if you're doing the texture, you need to take your stencil to the the sink immediately afterwards and get it rinsed off because if it dries, it's really hard to get off if you can get it off at all. So very important to know that you have to get it clean. Paint doesn't matter, but texture does. And you'll notice I'm using the side of my palette knife. I'm not like pushing right onto it. I'm using the side and scraping. That's a definite distinctive difference. If I pushed it right down on there, then it might bleed under as well. Okay, so now I've got that coated. I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel, and then I'll show you this. Now, a technique you could do with this. Oh, look how cold it is. And it did actually bleed under right there in the middle. I didn't hold it down enough. It crumbled as well. Um, but it's... It's fine, but I could let that dry and then I could antique or use um, another color, a wash on top of it, and it would make a really cool textured effect. So very, very cool. So now the last thing I'm going to show you today is that now that I've done this, I can go in here and I can glitter on top of that paste. I mean, nothing says like... Nothing says princess, princess besides princess glitter. Beside, yeah. White glitter on paint. Yeah. Like it's almost a fairy tale. It is. Okay, we have a glitter tray somewhere. <laughs> Cut it down the yeah. very bottom. <laughs> Found it, big guy. Oh, when did we get that? I've been holding out. Where did that come <laughs> from? I've never seen it. 
It's here now. Merry Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas me. to Carrie. Okay, so these are really cool. Um, a cookie sheet would work, but you just pound all this. Um, glitter is more expensive than blood, so um, just want to point that out. So, like, look at how freaking cute that is. Doesn't that say princess? It does. It's so pretty. It's. Yeah, close up to the camera here. Yep. Give it some movement a little bit. Yeah, you glitter. And you just really, really pound it. When this dries, I can use a mop brush and I can brush off any excess. Mm -hmm. You're gonna wanna wash your mop brush and know that glitter is forever. So like it will be in all your things forever. If you use it, just know that, but choose wisely. But then what's cool about these trays is you can take them and you can go, I have a plug on it. So the neat thing is they have a plug. So you can go right on in to your glitter bottle. Doo, doo, doo. And woof, don't spill it. But now you have your glitter back in your bottle and you haven't wasted it because glitter is so expensive. I cannot actually believe how expensive it is. All right, you guys, that is our lesson today. I hope that you loved it. Um, we will see you Tuesday of all the days of the year except for um, December, maybe. <laughs> December about killed us. It was busy. It was busy, busy. So um, thank you for joining us. See you next week. Bye.